what is up everyone welcome back to my channel it's your girl alexis i'm back y'all and i missed y'all before anybody says something yes i am leaning on a towel um the dress that i have on is very see-through but i really like it and i didn't want to change because i was taking some pictures and stuff so we're just going to deal with this for now i'm sure if you've read from the title we're going to be talking about my relationship with my father as a transgender woman but before we get into that tea make sure you like comment and subscribe follow me on instagram at alexis in and yeah let's get into this so my mom was actually the inspiration behind this video she was kind of motivating me to record this and talk about this just in case someone wanted to hear you know what my relationship is like with my father which is, is is crazy i kind of you know was contemplating a lot on making this video because i was a little bit uncomfortable and it still makes me uncomfortable but you know i got some confirmation in a dream last night that made me say you know what let me go ahead and talk about this just in case some of my girls want to you know hear my testimony and my you know stories with the man that created me so yeah me and my father do not have a relationship. I actually have not talked to him in like four years, if I'm not mistaken, which is crazy because, you know, he was in my life very much so in my childhood and all of that stuff. So now for it to happen four years is actually crazy. To go ahead and answer the big question, is he not in my life because I am trans? And the answer to that is actually no. My father kicked me out of his home at 19 because I actually came... Well, let me not say this. I was already kicked out of his house for prior reasons that me and my family were dealing with. And then once I got kicked out, you know, I sent him a long message, you know, before I knew about even transitioning or anything, just telling him that I was gay at that time. So after that, he really didn't really want anything to do with me. He disowned me. But at the same time when all of that was happening, there was, and, and I hate to say it y'all, but there was such a big relief off of my shoulders because I knew, which I'll get into, but I knew that I would not be able to really enjoy and live my life if I were still under his shackles, if you will. And to add on what I was saying a little bit earlier about him not, you know, kicking me out because of me. Well, he knows that I'm trans y'all at this moment, but he does not know what I look like. Like he's talked to my mom because him and my mom still keep in contact and my sister because you know, he's a grandpa and stuff or whatever now. But um, he does not even, he's scared to even see what I look like, which is understandable, but it's just such a funny little journey that we're on. But let me start from the, the beginning with y'all, okay? So basically, if you watch any of my story times, I have always been like, you know, an interesting kid. I've always known that I was different or whatever, but I think my father also knew that I was different. One thing I can say is that I'm very much so a mom's girl, but I was definitely a daddy's girl too. Now looking at it because I was such, I wanted to please them too so much. Like everything I did, I wanted to make sure that they approved of my actions. Like I was, you know, the vice president in high school. I wanted to make sure that my grades are right. I even did sports and shit that I never wanted to do because I just really wanted the approval of my parents, especially my father. But he was very hard, you know, he was a, a hard man to please. But I, now looking back, I can definitely see that he had his own demons and stuff that he was battling, you know. So one thing I can say is that anything that I have experienced with my parents i have forgiven them because i know that there is no manual to raising a child and especially a manual of raising a child like myself i just always wanted to please them and you know when he would call like he was my father was more so of a boastful person in the sense of like i felt like a trophy at times because like i was smart and i was talented and i was the vice president and i would have like you know i just did good achievements so like when he would be with his friends and stuff you know he would call me you know and have me on speakerphone just to kind of like boast about that but then when he would get home it was a different story he had more of a dark energy but like i said now i understand you know, that he had his own battles and stuff that he was dealing with. So, you know, it is what it is. We all had a little tough childhood or whatever. My father was the type of a person, he was not affectionate at all. Like he was not affectionate at all. Like he was more so of a monetary person, like in, in exchange for his time, because he was always working. He always was hustling, trying to get the money or whatever. But 
you know, in exchange for his time, he gave us money. You know, he wasn't there, he gave us money. For Christmas, he gave us money. When he was away, he gave us money. You know, it was always that. And you know, at first, child, give me the money. But then you kind of grow up and you realize, okay, I think I, I would have valued the time a little bit more. But we all lived in a house, you know, at our last encounters with each other. And in this house, you know, there were cameras everywhere. There were cameras on the windows. There were, you know, voice monitors. The cameras had motion sensors, cameras all around the house, inside the house. It was just so crazy. So like, it's so funny because I call myself Princess Sin a lot, like on other social medias and stuff. And you know, people think I'm just trying to be cute or whatever, but I genuinely felt like a princess. Like I had this long hair locked in the house, couldn't talk to nobody, couldn't do nothing, getting in trouble for everything. So I just felt like a princess that was locked up. Even within myself, like I couldn't be myself. Like I was starting to realize, you know, my queerness in college. So then once I came back, cause I had to drop out of college because we couldn't afford it y'all. Like, oh my gosh, I had to drop out of college. So this, this is kind of like a story time, I guess. But yeah, so I dropped out, went back home and it was just like a whole lot going on. But I remember being in college and feeling like, I know that I won't be able to be happy in this life and trigger warning, but I wouldn't want to live had I not been able to truly live out the full expression of my life. You know what I'm saying? And I'm 19 years old at this time, like really feeling all of this and knowing like, yeah, this shit is not for me. And as much as I love my father, I still got love for him. I knew that me and him would not be able to share a same space if I were to live my life. So anyways, let's fast forward a little bit to me telling y'all I got kicked out. So my family was going through some situations. So honestly, my mom, me, and my sister all got kicked out. You know, he was a very dominant, like he was a, a very hyper-masculine man. Like he did not play like, it was crazy. And so there was always this kind of fear set in with, uh, I, I honestly want to say all of us with him. So anyways, we all got kicked out for different reasons. And then after that, I told y'all, I went ahead and told him that I was gay at that time. So at that time, I literally felt a weight lifted off of my shoulders. And I remember like after that, like that next six months, I was experimenting with makeup and really engulfing myself in my sexuality and learning who this girl is that I had locked up for, you know, 19 years of my life. So then later that year, and I think this was actually like 2019. So later that year, I find out about ballroom and I meet femme queens and trans women for the first time. And then, you know, literally like within a month of meeting them, I'm transitioning. So it was all, it was just really crazy, y'all. It was just so crazy. It was so fast paced because like the minute I found out about this stuff, like I just did it. Cause I'm like, this is me. Like, this is my life. So boom, fast forward all of that time. So we're going to fast forward to maybe like last year, 2022. So there was a lot of more drama with my family. So anyways, I kind of lost contact with everybody, if I'm going to be completely honest. I lost contact with everybody. And then, you know, I st slowly started to integrate back in with them. And by this point, my father had been, you know, trying to rebuild a relationship with my sister because at this point she has two babies and he's a grandfather. And even though he didn't do right by us, we, we didn't want to like, well, she didn't want to take away his you know, right to knowing his grandchildren or whatever. My sister, she's calling me, telling me about this. And low key, y'all, I'm not gonna lie. I was so hurt because like, you know, like I said, I had lost contact with everyone. Basically, I wasn't talking to my mom. I wasn't talking to my dad. And my sister, she had her own life. So it was just kind of like, damn, like I'm just out here by myself. And then to top it off, I find out that y'all are talking to my father and he has no interest and talking to me. So I'm just like, oh my gosh. So that went on for pretty much that whole year. I was so depressed y'all because like, like I said, like as much as my father probably did not want to meet me at that time or was just not interested, I still love him so much. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my gosh. So we entered the year of 2023 and my sister, she just, something horrible happens to her, which I'm not going to talk about because y'all, every time I think about it, I could cry like it's not even a joke so anyways my sister's in the hospital and like mind you when i stop talking to him like i stop talking to his whole family like his whole family is just like out of there i'm not communicating with anybody and you know my sister's in the hospital but this for some reason this is bringing everybody from both sides of the family together everybody's coming to see my sister make sure she's okay praying and all of that stuff so i'm i'm seeing it i didn't met his mom after four years i didn't met his his 
nephews and nieces all over again and it's crazy and like i'm starting to get kind of nervous because i'm like oh my gosh like am i going to meet him and mind you they these people his side of the family i had stopped me seeing them when i was like 10. now they're seeing me 24 grown woman so it was just really crazy so i'm getting kind of nervous i'm like oh my gosh but like everybody accepted me with open arms and everybody was so accepting and honestly i remember when i was just going down i was so frustrated because i did not want to meet them honestly i'm not gonna lie to y'all but i was like y'all not gonna stop me from going to go see my sister this is my baby like i'm not finna i'm not hell no like if something happened to her something might as well happen to me so he ended up not coming but he kept like keeping in contact with her and my mom and stuff and this whole time i'm just kind of like damn like i was so ready to get it over with because like by this point everybody's so comfortable with him you know what i'm saying and i felt like such a ghost like i don't think y'all know how it feels to feel lonely like that like i felt so isolated and stuff and especially since i've transitioned i've experienced a lot of loneliness that's why i don't if you notice like i don't have a lot of friends and stuff so family is always something that i kind of run to but you know i was just like damn like i really was kind of ready to get that over with so anyways me and my mom started to really really talk a lot about it and i started to express to her like how i feel and then like i remember there was a point when i was kind of like you know what i don't want to meet him i'm not interested but then i kind of grew older and even with this the situation with my sister just like you never know when you will lose somebody or you never know what could happen next like i, I want to go ahead and move forward and just move past this like you like me you hate me but let's just get over this you know what i'm saying like it's just crazy and by this point he done started asking about me boom me and my mom started talking about she had conversations with him and stuff and you know he's currently like very inquisitive about me like because he has three other daughters but he was like so do i say i have four daughters now like so it's legs and it's you know he's just so interested you know in me and he's always asking questions and he's learning more and more about the community but i can obviously still tell that he's very nervous and still like reserved about meeting me because i think learning about it and stuff is and trying to uh figure it out is much more different than actually seeing it you know what i'm saying and then i think he also has this idea of what he thinks that i'm gonna look like so i think that can also be nerve-wracking but honestly i'm i'm telling y'all my story because i want you know young trans girls or just trans women in, in general or anybody who has difficult relationships with their families or whatnot to know that everything is a process transitioning comes with a lot and as much as we like to get mad and get frustrated with people y'all this is something this is crazy like this is a crazy journey that not everybody will get nobody has a handbook on how to raise people like us you know what i'm saying and it's a difficult process it's a lonely process but be patient with people and know that if it's something that you want to work out or if it's meant to work out it will work out and if it's not it's not like as much as i love my father and i have you know reconnected with a lot of my family i respect that if it never happens that's okay because so long i have beat myself up and almost regretted things that i've done for the sake of the connections that i've lost especially with my father you know what i'm saying but that shit is over with like it is what it is like if you want to know me you will know me if you want to see me you will see me if you want to love me you will love me i'm human just like everybody else you're human just like everybody else and you cannot force nothing on people because you also just don't know what other people are dealing with you don't know what demons other people are dealing with and that's okay that's okay because when the time happens if i'm still open and ready i will still be open and ready if it's not then it just is what it is but to know that i did my part and i still you know understand and respect other people's space and and, and just continue to be patient even with myself it's, it's a growing thing but if you're dealing with stuff with your parents just just live your life baby you know what i'm saying live your life transition in peace and when your time when you're ready not when nobody else is ready when you're ready you you make the certain moves that you want to make you know what i'm saying don't rush into nothing and let me say 
everything happens for a reason. Any relationship that's supposed to be salvaged will be salvaged. Any relationship that's done is done. And if, if, if that time comes when you're meant to be together again or meet each other again, it will happen. But don't beat yourself up because you're trans. Don't beat yourself up because of anything. And that's something that has been a big lesson for me because I have sought that affection and that attention in many ways. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you could say I had daddy issues or whatnot. And I'm the first that can admit that I probably did. But after seeking that inner knowing within myself and learning and being able to recognize certain things that I was doing because of that relationship, I was able to grow and to learn and to just, you know, be like, it is what it is. I know that my lifestyle and the way that I am is a lot and I don't blame anybody. You know, that's why I respect everybody's boundaries and I respect what everybody feels, but I'm also not going to force anything. And I also honestly don't care enough to push that on anybody because I value this and I have people and we have to learn to be grateful for the people that are currently in our lives and willing to accept us and love us and all of that and that's all you can do. I know this video is probably all over the place it's just like a little story time chit chat whatever you want to call it but y'all I really hope this was helpful and I hope that y'all you know just continue to be loved and love me and like i said y'all thank y'all so much for the followers and the, the subscribers whatever it's called and yeah i hope this was helpful and not too short as i always say but thank you guys so much for watching make sure you follow me on instagram at alexis sin and bye i love y'all